H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Hello everyone, very good evening to everyone. I hope uh, all of you are able to uh, see my screen. Can I quickly get a confirmation from all of you or probably any one of you, whoever comes first, uh, to just tell me that you guys are able to see my screen. Uh, hi, uh, Misan, hi, Sweta, hi, Ina, hi, Gigi, hi, Taluka, Talika, I'm sorry. All right, and hello to all, all the other folks who have not yet told hi to me. <clears throat> all right, so I'll just give uh, a few minutes more to say hi, uh, to get hi from all the other folks as well. Uh, hi, Nidhi. All right, so let's get started, guys. Uh, let me even record this session in case uh, we need this for future reference. It's getting recorded. All right. So again, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, this is uh, Jeram here. Um, I would, I'm basically working as a senior developer um, in, in a company and having almost around 14 plus, pretty much close to 15 years of experience in Java J2E and have worked in different domains like telecom banking and healthcare. And uh, in this particular session, uh, as I think all of you might be knowing that we would be basically talking about uh, Java and Java and Java. That's all. We will not talk about uh, anything else apart from little bit of the UI um, that is we'll talk about react we'll, I, I have slides we'll even talk about those things and uh, we'll talk about uh, the organization and uh, we'll talk about the Java opportunities uh, the modules which I would be covering up in Java and as well as the enrollment process okay so this is a very short video maybe I'll take uh, half an hour or a little bit more uh, of your time and uh, we'll, if you have any questions, concerns, you can very well ping me in the chat as well. And uh, there are a few questions coming up, so hold on to those questions. Eventually, I will be answering up those uh, questions in this entire uh, video, okay? So uh, again, welcome to the H2K Infosys. Uh, H2K Infosys provides uh, world-class service and IT training with real-time project work for corporates as well as individuals. It does uh, special IT training for MS students in US. Uh, it does software design, development, uh, QA manual automation and performance testing and maintenance as well. And it even does uh, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. Okay, so if you get want to get more information about uh, H2K Infosys, please uh, visit the website www.h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, the very first and foremost thing is uh, why to learn something, right? Uh, well, you learn uh, to have fun. You learn how to mingle with others. And everything is for your own benefit, right? So likewise, why do you learn Java or any of the programming language at this stage? Or maybe you're in a very early stage of your career or you want to pursue a career in something, right? So... I think we all, are, we all are here. I'm here to teach you guys Java and you guys are here to learn Java because you want to get a job, right? Now, I believe uh, you guys might be knowing by now or if not, Google it, find it out, uh, which is the most uh, opening, What what is it, which, which particular programming language has most opening in this programming world. So you would definitely find Java is the only one which has got most openings, okay? So here we are uh, learning Java right now, at least the initial stage of Java uh, to know what is Java. Okay, that's the very first step. 
Now, there are different websites uh, you guys need to understand now from now itself. Um, like we have got Dice, Career Builder, Monster, Indeed, and a couple of other websites as well, wherein you should go open up your account and um, start scrolling through the jobs, applying for it. Maybe not now, maybe after a month or two, you should be doing that. Okay, so pretty much you should be well versed with uh, different uh, websites. Do not confine yourself to only a particular website. Okay, so try different websites. You might uh, get different opportunities in different uh, websites. Okay, now uh, you might have you might seen this one as Java, right? So this is our main objective to learn Java. Along with Java, there are a couple of other different frameworks like Spring, Hibernate, a JMS, or Java Messaging Services or web services and a couple of other different technologies we need to learn, right? So why did I add all the other things apart from Java? Because uh, Java is kind of a bigger ecosystem and uh, it's not sufficient for us to just learn Java and find a job pretty quickly, right? So apart from Java, there are a couple of different ecosystems in and around. So let, let's say, for example, Spring uh, is kind of a framework uh, Hibernate is also a framework. I mean, if you guys have a pen and a paper, just note it down. Um, you, I would even uh, suggest you guys to do some more research on these things, uh, maybe after the class as well, right? So whenever you do a search in Java in any of the different websites, every time you would uh, search for, okay, Java with Spring, with Hibernate. So it's like a, when you do a Google search, you use different keywords right because most of the companies when they ask for a java developer right um, they would look out for a combination with okay you know java you know spring you know hibernate you know jms you know web services you know maven you know ant so different combinations you have it okay so they would always look out for uh, a candidate having all the combinations or at least maybe out of 10 if you know at least six uh, six to seven combinations then you are a good candidate, okay? So that's the reason I have put on all these other things in this particular slide, okay? So the objective is that we would be learning all the combinations, uh, whichever is really good uh, for you to be in the market and uh, get a nice uh, job, in fact, okay? Now, uh, for me, this is one of the main slide uh, wherein we are going to talk about uh, different technologies, different frameworks we will be learning in the entire session. Okay, so let me get started with this. And uh, this would be the complete course objective for us. Now, if you see this one, we have got in the center that is Java, right? Because uh, if we want to learn the entire ecosystem of Java, we have to learn the very basic core language of Java, right? Yeah. Now, we are typically going to learn Java 11. I mean, every year Java is coming up with new versions, okay? And uh, even uh, like I have started learning Java from uh, 1.2. Now it is uh, pretty much 12, 13 is also coming up, right? Now, in most of the different production environment, we still use Java 8. I mean, my company still uses 8 and different other companies, uh, they are still in Java 8, which is pretty much a proven solution. Okay, so people are slowly migrating into the latest version of Java and whatnot. So typically we'll talk about uh, Java 11 and I will show you how to install the software, how to make sure that uh, the installation is perfect and you were able to compile, run a program and likewise. So we'll see those things, maybe not in today's session, but uh, moving forward when we start this course, we will talk about all those different concepts uh, uh, in and around Java as well, okay? Now, there was a question to me that, uh, uh, how many classes will be there for Java, right? So as I said, I will be answering those questions later, but uh, only for learning core Java, I would be pretty much taking uh, 18 to 20 classes, okay? So when I say 18 to 20 classes, I would say 18 to 20 hours only for the core Java concept because this is one of the most important uh, aspect. If you are pretty much good enough in core Java, then the, all the other uh, things in and around Java are just peanuts, right? 
because if you know the core concept, everything is pretty easy for you. So we will be basically taking a good amount of time in understanding the very core concept of Java. Now, being a, uh, I mean, in my session, people even join from testing department, uh, from core development department and whatnot. So for, I would suggest being a tester also, even though you join this session, well, uh, starting 20 sessions would be pretty much good for you, no doubt, but again, there are other things like uh, you have web services, even testers, they need uh, to learn what is a web service. Now, again, there's no harm in understanding the whole ecosystem of, uh, of of Java, right? Because you never know being also a tester because in my company, the, the testers also know all the different uh, technologies because sometimes they have to use it, they have to learn it and they have to implement those technologies as well, okay? So it's no harm in understanding the different uh, concept and ecosystem uh, in and around Java, right? Okay, so let's go through the path uh, way on what we're gonna learn first, what next, because you can see a lot of things out here in this particular slide. Um, all right, there are a couple of other questions coming up, uh, Ruby. I'll talk about all the other things uh, pretty soon. Okay, now uh, talking about Core Java, uh, as I said, I will be taking up almost 18 to 20 sessions. After Core Java, we would be Moving on to advanced concepts. So when I talk about advanced concept, we have got like HTML, servlets, and JSPs. Now you would see, okay, what is an advanced concept? What is this core concept? So in the core concept, we'll be talking about the very basics of Java, right? How to uh, write a Java program, uh, like what is an object-oriented concept? What is multi-threading concept? Uh, what is string handling, Java collections, um, and input and output operations? and generic exception handling, JDBC reflection. So there are so many different concepts which are part of Java itself, right? So this will help us in grasping the uh, core concept of Java. Also, we will be talking about what is Java language, what is bytecode, what is uh, Java virtual machine, um, JRE, JDK. So these are like uh, conceptual understanding about how Java works and, and whatnot, okay? Now, after finishing up the uh, core concept, we would be moving on to advanced concept. Now, when you talk about advanced concept, we will basically have an understanding about, uh, uh, I mean, how do you uh, go to the browser, use a particular URL, let's say google.com or yahoo.com or uh, anything.com, right? You get a response back. Now, we will understand uh, how those technology works, right? So we would be talking about what is a client, what is a server, and likewise, right? So we will see how to send a request, how to get a response. So when I say send a request and response, the moment you say in the browser, www.google.com, in a blank browser, unless and until you say enter, right? What is that? Uh, the moment you say enter, you're sending a request, and then you're getting a response back, so probably the, the Google homepage. Right. Likewise, we will see those concepts in this. So which is pretty much advanced. And uh, we say these as distributed application. Now, what is distributed application? It's like uh, the application does not sit in your machine. In fact, it is going to sit in a in a place wherein everyone can start accessing those machines. So it's distributed. It's like placed somewhere in, in a common place and everyone can access those systems. OK, so we will understand about those concepts. In the meantime, we'll talk about HTML. We'll talk about uh, servlets, JSPs, and whatnot, right? Now, once we finish up uh, servlets, JSPs, we will be moving on to Hibernate. Uh, Hibernate is, again, a framework in order to interact with the database. Now, whenever you write any application, uh, let's say talking about uh, Facebook or Yahoo or your, your Gmail account and whatnot. So you have got a bunch of emails, or you have got in the Facebook, you have got an account, you have got so many uh, videos, photos uploaded and whatnot, right? On your particular account. So obviously those uh, videos, chats and everything would be stored somewhere. So we need a database in order to store the information I mean, maybe it's pretty much, uh, I'm talking about this concept because some of the people might not be having a database background at all. So database is kind of a uh, kind of a software or a physical location wherein you store the data uh, of, of yours, right? So we will see in our case uh, how to 
talk to the database using Hibernate. So we would specifically use Spring JPAs or Spring data in order to connect to the database. Okay, so uh, again, Hibernate is also a free, is a framework which uh, is an ORM framework technically. There is your object relationship mapping uh, framework, which is basically used for querying the data from the database and bringing the information and giving it back to the application layer. Okay, so we will talk about those things when uh, when the time comes. Now, likewise, there are a couple of other different frameworks like MyBat is Hibernate, um, JDO. So there are a couple of other different frameworks which does the same kind of thing as well. Okay, but in our session, we'll talk specifically about Hibernate. So, um, well, when I talk about database, right, uh, I technically do not need anything in order to talk to the database, right? Now, from the Java program itself, there are libraries. So when I say libraries, uh, it's like uh, when you want to read a book for, in, in your school or maybe right now as well, you basically do not want to buy that book you want to go to the library and borrow a book read it and give it back to back to the library right so likewise what java does is uh, if you want to do some sort of some basic uh, functionality uh, and whatnot let's say for example you got a name you want to convert that name to uppercase lowercase so you don't have to write any program in fact there are uh, easy ways of converting your name to an uppercase completely or to a lowercase completely Likewise, Java has got a bunch of other libraries uh, which we would eventually use it, okay? Now, what I'm saying is that uh, Java has uh, interfaces. We'll talk about what is an interface in our core Java concepts in order to connect to the database actually. But uh, we would be basically using Hibernate so that uh, there are so many other complications which is present when we use core Java in order to connect to the database. So we will, Talk about those concepts and once we start using it, it will be a lot easier for you to understand the concepts behind why do we use Hibernate, why do we use Core Java uh, in order to connect to the database and whatnot. Okay, so just giving a high level understanding about uh, what all things we are typically going to learn actually. And then slowly we will be moving on to Spring and Spring is again a very important framework, like uh, everyone uses Spring in order to develop an enterprise application. Now, when I say enterprise application, it's uh, typically an application with, it's it's a huge application typically, okay? Having thousands of files, in fact, right? So we will see using Spring, it makes our application pretty, pretty much more easily maintainable and whatnot, okay? So Spring by itself has got different verticals, different concepts. We will understand all the other different concepts in Spring, okay? Now, um, there are a couple of other things in and around Java, like uh, JUnit. We will see what is a JUnit. So it's basically a very, uh, it's, it's basically a test framework with the help of which you can test your application, okay? So it's smallest unit of code. Uh, maybe for when I say smallest unit of code, if your code, Java code is uh, uh, having 100 lines of code, for instance, right? So you can pick only 10 lines of code, which we'll talk about it as a function, and you can only test a small piece of code using JUnit, right? So let's say, for instance, I mean, you, you, you are grown up in a house and suddenly like uh, you want to maintain uh, or do some sort of maintenance on your house, right? Maybe uh, you have got five rooms, all of a sudden you want to do maintenance, uh, but all the five rooms are not free at the same time. So what do you do? Okay, I, I just pick room number one and room number two. I do testing or maybe some sort of uh, renovation on those small house, maybe a, a single house or single room instead of house, a single room in the house, right? So I have got five rooms. I just uh, test my one single room or I would renovate one single room and all the other uh, rooms are pretty much engaged in doing something else, right? So I can renovate a small unit of code or test a small unit of code in my program. So we would technically use JUnit. There are other test frameworks also, but we would typically use JUnit here, all right? And now, uh, well, I talk about Java, I talk about HTML server JSP, where do I write those code, 
right? You need a place to write the program, right? You cannot write your program in your head itself, okay? And then it executes. It does not happen in that way. You got to write your program somewhere. Well, you can uh, use a normal Notepad or Notepad++ Sublime Text in order to write the program. But in our case, we will be typically using Eclipse. Sorry, we can use Eclipse. We will be typically using IntelliJ in order to write our program, all right? And uh, I'm going to talk about how to install IntelliJ, how, how to uh, create a project, how to create a module and submodules and likewise, okay? Now, in, in this Java world, there are uh, three competitors, Eclipse, NetBeans, and uh, IntelliJ. Uh, mostly, you would see people using Eclipse uh, because it's a complete free uh, freeware application. Um, you don't have to, it doesn't charge you anything for this one, but IntelliJ is, uh, it has got the free version as well as the commercial version, okay? So we will talk about uh, IntelliJ. Uh, you can do almost everything whatever we are going to learn in, in uh, using IntelliJ itself, okay? All right, so these are the editors. Uh, and uh, editors in the sense are IDE, Integrated Development Environment, wherein uh, you can start writing the code and it'll be a lot more easier for you to write a code using these all uh, tools, okay? I mean, you are very much welcome to write a code using Notepad++, but it'll be very much hard for you to navigate between files because we would see that when you write start writing programs you would see there would be a lot of interaction between different files okay let's say uh, on a day-to-day -day basis you make phone call to your uh, mom your dad uh, your sisters right exactly right i mean uh, there's so many complex relationship between um, all of you right so well, you have a phone to make it so easy to make a call and likewise. So you're using some sort of interface, right? You're using a phone to connect to someone. Likewise, we would use these IDEs in order to write our code, which will make our life more easier. Likewise, you can just correlate things uh, and, and think about it. Now, there is something known as a skill developer. We'll talk about it when we make some database calls and whatnot. So I'm just putting up all the icons here so that uh, we know that we are going to learn about all the different uh, components, tools, and likewise, right? So that I don't miss out all the key points. So that's the reason I have got almost many things in the same uh, slide. Now, once we finish up, uh, as I said, once from the core to advanced to hibernate to spring, right? Uh, in the meantime, we will be even talking about Apache Maven. So it's kind of a build tool. Uh, so assuming like you have, uh, I mean, you, when you buy a car, right, uh, or any vehicle, do you think that all the vehicles are, uh, all the parts of a vehicle are uh, manufactured in the same factory? No, right? Because let's say you buy a Honda car, right? Honda is basically, uh, I mean, there are different other uh, classes of Honda, let's say the higher class of Honda is using Bose as a uh, sound system, right? Now, Bose is not Honda's uh, manufactured uh, product. So it's uh, someone else. It's it's Bose company, right? So, but I want everything to be assembled in one single place. So what I do, okay, I've got a maybe a factory in New Jersey. Uh, what I would do, I would order all the different components and I would be building up all the, uh, I would be assembling all the different products in my Honda, uh, which is the latest version, uh, and uh, then shipping it to the client, right? So I need a, a kind of a uh, tool which would assemble everything together, right? And then give it to the client. So likewise, think about it that Apache Maven is one which builds your entire application, okay? It brings all the dependencies. So when I say, for building up my Honda, C, uh, Honda, which is the latest version, my dependency is a Bose uh, sound system, right? Or uh, maybe a, a some some tires, right? So likewise, so Apache Maven is one of the uh, framework which will help us in doing all those kind of builds and uh, creating one single application which have which would be having everything in it. Okay, so we'll, it's pretty interesting. We'll talk about it uh, once we get into those concepts, right? So it's not a separate topic. In fact, when we start learning about all the other different concepts like Spring, Hibernate, we would eventually 
learn these uh, frameworks, right? So after learning Spring, we will be moving on to web services. Now, I, I'm i sure you guys might have heard a lot about web services. Uh, it's, it's kind of a ser service-oriented architecture. Now, what does that mean uh, in this programming world? Uh, so initially, let's say we have Java, we have .NET, we have got Python, we have got PHP. So, so many different programming languages we have. Now, what if one programming language wants to talk to another programming language? So let's say, for instance, I mean, uh, you want you want to talk to someone who, who does not even understand your language or the other person does not even understand your language. What do you do? Can anyone tell me what would you do if two person interacts with either, each other and they do not know anyone's language? So what is the best choice for us to do, do out there? Translator, right? So you need some sort of translator. Yeah, thanks, Ramesh. So I would bring a person who knows both the languages, right? So assuming I go to China and they, I don't understand Chinese and Chinese, they don't even understand my mother tongue. Or let's say they don't even understand Hindi, for instance. So I need a translator who translates, who knows both the languages. So likewise, think about this web services. It's like, uh, it's kind of a service-oriented architecture if you are a Java developer, you would create a program in such a way that uh, you would tell the translator, okay, I this is what I need to convey to others. So the translator will have all the information and the person who would try to read the data, whatever this Java programmer has given. So it's kind of a common platform which is understood by both the programs so we'll talk about it but i just give you a very uh, uh, vague idea about what it does okay but again uh, that was the initial idea that if two different language want to communicate with each other so we would basically use something known as a web services but now these days even though you are java language to java language and you want to communicate with each other you would use web services as well in order to communicate with each other as well, right? So we will talk about this. It's pretty interesting to know about this. Uh, so in the meantime, we will also talk about a tool that is the SOAP UI, which is uh, technically used for testing. So mainly used for testers to test the web service uh, code, okay? So we would understand how to expose a web service. We will understand how to consume a web service. So when I say con consumer, exposure right so it's something like uh, um, someone is publishing an article in the website so what do you do you google it and read those articles you, you are the consumers of those, those articles right um, and you and someone who's publishing this article he's a publisher right so likewise so we'll talk about those things uh, pretty interesting concepts um, and easy to learn as well and then we will talk about uh, in the meantime, we'll talk about XMLs. Uh, we'll see how to exchange data from one application to another application using XMLs. It's kind of a structured language um, or say it is an extensible markup language. So we will see it's uh, mainly used for configuration and whatnot, all right? And in the meantime, um, so when we start learning about JSP servlets or when we start learning about advanced concept, we would start learning about, about a middleware application, uh, sorry, not a middleware application, a web server actually. So we'll talk about what is Apache Tomcat. So uh, we'll not uh, use the version seven, instead we are going to use the version nine uh, in, in our uh, application, okay? So we'll talk about Apache Tomcat, JIT is one among uh, the other uh, web server which we can also use, but we would typically use Apache Tomcat, right? So I mean, if you guys want to take a screenshot of this, please go ahead and do that um, and try to find more information about all the different components. You will be pretty much amazed that Java is, has got a huge ecosystem. And it is not compulsory that if you learn everything out of, out of this slide, you would be using everything in your project. Maybe in one project, you would be using one half. The other project, you might be using the other half. In some of the project, you might be using the whole ecosystem as well, right? So it all depends on uh, application to application, by the way, All right? So last but not the least, we will talk about Java messaging services, that is, or we see it as a JMS 
So this is kind of a, a sending a, uh, okay. So this JMS is something like sending a message, right? So for instance, you send a message, a WhatsApp message to your friend, right? Or to a group. So how does that happen? Like uh, you send a message, if someone receives a message, you get an acknowledgement also. So we'll talk about those things in your JMS. So JMS is like, you have a Java uh, application and the Java application, you want to communicate uh, using some messages. So you would be using Java messaging services, by the way. All right, so we'll talk about uh, uh, point to point and publisher to subscriber model. Uh, so when I say point to point, it's like you send only a single message to, uh, to your friend. No one can read that message. So that is a point to point. The other one is your publisher to subscriber. Like you send a message to the whole group Whoever is subscribed to the WhatsApp group, everyone gets that message, right? So it's it's pretty interesting as well. We'll see how to uh, use it. Now, one other thing is that once you learn core Java, right? Just keep this in your mind. Uh, it, it is not mandatory that you go step by step. So as I said, I, I'll be using Java to uh, service JSPs to hibernate in Spring, then to web services, then to JMS, right? So there is no particular order. You can... You can learn, once you learn Java, you can learn anything. You can just point the arrow to anything uh, in this uh, in this whole uh, uh, slide out here, okay? Just keep that in your mind. Now, last but not the least, we will even talk about a very basic understanding about React. Um, and uh, this uh, React is basically a, a front-end um, framework uh, with the help of which you can develop beautiful reactive application which can interact with the backend service now i would say backend services all java web services spring hibernate these are all backend services so when i say backend services these are all typical java program which you write in the in the in the back uh, in the uh, in the server now there should be someone to interact right so for instance you have the facebook account you click on your account you just scroll through all the posts and whatnot. So that is a front-end application and the data what you get it from the background, from the backend services are all the posts. So those posts, posts are saved somewhere, right? So we will typically um, do those kind of concepts in React.js. So there are a couple of different frameworks like React, Angular, Vue, uh, many other different frameworks which is present in the market, but typically we'll talk about React.js, okay? So in this particular batch, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take, uh, not going to uh, wait for a good amount of time to talk about React, but instead I would encourage you guys to learn React by your own in the very initial stage itself. Okay, that's really going to help you, me, and everyone because this itself is going to take a good amount of time for you guys to learn. And uh, uh, this is this program is specifically meant for Java actually. Okay, but React is completely a UI framework. So there's a reason I would encourage you guys to learn React by yourself. I will also jump in, uh, maybe at later point of time, but I'll talk about those programs at the upcoming sessions, right? So with further ado, let's uh, get on to other slides, which are pretty much continuation of uh, these old slides. Like I was talking about Core Java, um, uh, he's James Goslin. He's known as the father of uh, Java. Um, and it was way back invented in 1995. And uh, one good thing about Java is that it runs in different platform. Okay, So like uh, you can write a program and you can run the same program in Windows, Mac, Unix, Solaris, and likewise. Okay. So this is a slide uh, talking about servlets. Uh, so we have got servlets and JSPs. These are in the same family. Uh, like um, it's like parent and uh, grandparents and you belong to the same uh, family, but you have got more advanced uh, knowledge uh, outlook than your parents some, at some point of uh, some places, but not in all the places though, for sure. They're more experienced by the way. But yeah, so this is, uh, we'll talk about servlets, container, uh, the complete life cycle. We'll talk about what is the life cycle at later stage and whatnot. Likewise, we have got Hibernate. Uh, as I said, uh, Hibernate is basically used for connecting to the database, pulling up the information and giving it to you. Uh, we'll talk about Hibernate uh, and also I would be giving assignments to you guys 
on a regular basis so we would be doing assignments uh, i have got a couple of other things in my mind as well i would be experimenting on this particular batch as well okay uh, so when i say experimenting on this batch i believe it's going to be a win-win situation for every one of us and let's see how it goes and then we will be talking about spring so i was talking about uh, the the spring as a whole right so if i go back to the slides here uh, I was talking about spring. Maybe spring has a very small place in this whole slide. Yeah. But believe me or not, spring is one of the most important concept in the in this Java world. Why? Because uh, spring gives you a lot of different flexibility. Uh, first of all, it is very easy to configure. Uh, we will spring also abstracts. So what is an abstraction again? Right now let's think about it uh, maybe you are applying for a passport uh, during olden days for instance now believe me or not there are so many documents you need to fill in right uh, okay i need to fill in uh, this that uh, maybe at least talking about just let's take out a take take a number out here so we'll say okay I, if i want to apply for a passport i might have to fill in 15 different forms go to this place go to that place um, uh, have an affidavit and likewise so maybe it's going to take uh, 15 20 days in order to just fill in the form right now what is an abstraction so what you do these days you uh, get an agent say okay this is the agent you just give him all the information and that agent basically does the same work which you should have been done but now the agent is doing it for you so the complexity behind applying for the forms filling up the forms going to different places those are completely hidden from you so those are completely abstracted from you so all the heavy lifting work is basically done by the framework itself now why would framework do that and what, what is the objective of doing it because it, it is saving uh because that's the problem statement everyone of us have it i don't want to go to different uh, places to apply for my passport what i want to do is i want to just have a common place so what spring does is Spring basically identifies those problem statements and makes sure that I have one single point and people just have to concentrate on what is the main objective. My main objective, just to apply for a passport. I don't want to go with the different hurdles out here. So that's what Spring does it. And believe me or not, once, you, when, once we start learning about Spring, you would uh, appreciate the framework uh, deeply. Okay, so uh, in this, there are different components of Spring like DAO, ORM, J, J, JE, Web, AOP, Core, right? Now in DAO, we'll talk about Spring JDBC, transaction management. Uh, in ORM, we'll talk about Hibernate uh, because as I said, there are different uh, frameworks like JPA, uh, Toplink, JDO, OJB, IBATIS. So different ORM framework, which we can even integrate along with Spring, but we'll just uh, learn one of the different uh, frameworks. Like in JWE, we would typically talk about JMS. Um, and believe me or not, guys, I mean, once we start learning Spring, you would understand that why why we are not learning all the things. We don't have to because uh, concept-wise, it's pretty similar. If you learn Spring basics, everything would come uh, handy along with it. Okay. So likewise, we will be talking about Spring MVC, uh, AOP, and and then Core. So this is we'll talk about the Spring Core. Right, and uh, as part of the spring, also we will be talking about something known as a Spring Boot. Uh, probably, if I get time, I'll even talk about uh, Spring Cloud. Uh, I'm also starting up a new channel wherein I'll be even talking about. Uh, I'll be posting some videos also, so that everyone can access those videos. I'll be sharing those informations um, slowly with you guys and whatnot. Okay. All right, so for me, believe me or not, I mean, Spring is one of the most interesting concepts. I feel uh, proud teaching this uh, this concept to all, all my students. And uh, it's, it's I think you'll have fun learning about Spring as well. And uh, then we'll talk about web services. Uh, it's, again, a client and the server-side application. Um, you basically make HTTP calls. Now, in your browser also when you just say www.google.com technically i'm you just copy that once you enter it copy that url and just paste it in a notepad you would see that in in front of that there would be http http hypertext transfer protocol right so there are protocols so 
uh, I believe every one of you know what is a protocol. It's like a set of rules and regulations in order to communicate with someone. It's what does that mean? Like you guys might be from different backgrounds. Uh, someone knows English, someone knows Chinese, someone knows uh, Indian languages and whatnot. But if I do not know all the languages and you guys also do not know all the languages. So how do we communicate? We communicate using English, right? So likewise, uh, it's a protocol. Uh, I follow one prot protocol and you guys understand those protocol, right? So likewise, web service is kind of a protocol uh, which is used for uh, communications and whatnot, okay? Well, uh, web services uses the HTTP protocol. So there are different protocols like file transfer protocol, uh, mailing protocol i mean believe me or not i mean when you send an email right uh, it's it's something known as email protocol smtp protocol simple mail transfer protocol actually smtp likewise there are different other protocols also in this uh, technology now as uh, when we talk about web services we'll talk about xml so we'll talk about uh, jacks ws jack rs so this is like soap based web services restful services um, and whatnot so there are different variations of web services as well okay it's pretty interesting and uh, you'll have, even have fun understanding about all these different uh, key concepts and in the meantime um, well we would also talk about design patterns so what is a design pattern it's like uh, uh, when you well, let's talk about uh, your parents, right? So your parents might have got into some problems in their lifetime uh, and they know how to solve that problem. Now, all of a sudden, you also got the same problem and you share with your parents saying that, okay, I've got the same problem. Well, your parents will say, okay, I mean, I had the same problem. Why don't you use this problem, use this solution? And it will definitely work because it's a proven solution. Uh, maybe their parents or their community, or they have already used it. So likewise, design patterns are as such. It is not specific that you would be using those design patterns in Java. This design patterns can be used in any different programming language, okay? So we would uh, cherry pick few design patterns. There are many design patterns. Uh, in this session, I'll be mostly talking about singleton, DAO, MVC, facade, command pattern, decorator design patterns. And if possible, I will also introduce a couple of other dif uh, different design patterns also. Okay, so think about design patterns are uh, proven solutions by your by some expertise uh, for a given problem statement, right? Okay, so uh, next I will be talking about JMS as I was talking about. Uh, this is a queue concept wherein you send a you being a person sending a message to your friend in WhatsApp and you get an acknowledgement also. You can see an arrow mark out here. Likewise, uh, when you want to send a message to a group. And everyone in the group basically consumes that message, right? And also sends an acknowledgement to you. So it's kind of a queue and a topic. So we'll talk about queues topic. And uh, there are different other concepts in ActiveMQ. Um, so we'll be basically using ActiveMQ, which is a, again a middleware application. Um, and in this, we'll be using that, okay? So this is also pretty interesting. So I would say everything is interesting in Java, guys, right? So uh, once you start getting into it, you would find the same concept to be used in many different situations and whatnot, right? So uh, hopefully you will have lots of fun uh, understanding all the other components. So last but not the least, uh, we will also uh, talk about React.js, very basic concept, understand what is a component, how to make uh, web service calls from React.js, okay? so. Um, as I said, our main objective and focus would be completely on Java framework in and around. Also, we have got React.js, which we will have a basic understanding about how to make uh, calls and uh, how to display th those data in the, in the UI and whatnot. Right? So that's all pretty much I had uh, on the main uh, frameworks and whatnot. Apart from that, right? Uh, in, in the learning process, we will also talk about what is log4j, what is a git. Uh, we will be using uh, GitHub in order to, as, as a version control, wherein we are going to check in, check out files, um, and we will understand the whole process about what is branching and whatnot. 
and also we would be using maven we would be using tomcat server we would be using jaxb junit i think we have already spoken about junit uh, in in the previous slides as well okay and i believe uh, there are a couple of more things which i have missed out or uh, i don't want to put everything in the same uh, everything in the slides out here i believe right uh, if i put everything i mean uh, you guys will know all the secrets about uh, all these topics i'm uh, just kidding but yeah so um, talking about the class information uh, there was uh, some gentleman asking me about the class hours and what not uh, so i would be typically doing three sessions or uh, three or more three or four sessions a week and typically those would be uh, one hour sessions okay so sometimes or probably uh, i would be even doing one and a half hour session as well uh, depending on the topics which i am or uh, what is the pace of the class depending on that I, i would be even having one and a half hours class as well so the complete session would be around 50 hours plus or minus if there are a lot of questions to be answered probably i might have to take uh, 40 55 sessions or if we are pretty good going smooth it might even come get completed in 45 uh, hours class as well okay now all the classes will be recorded and uploaded uh, initially in the google drive and you also would be getting a permanent link wherein you guys can go and access all the videos in there itself okay so that's all about the class information i think uh, uh, i did i miss out any questions on the class how many classes will be there so i think swet i answered your question here is this one time class or there are more classes um well i'm not sure hena if i understood your question is a selenium well arshad in selenium you use core java concepts for sure right uh, you have to use your core concepts in order to core java concept in order to write some programs for selenium so this is definitely going to help you as i said the initial 20 classes would be pretty much helpful for you okay uh, so can i show the syllabus uh, yes i can uh we'll be finishing in two months total time so pretty much that's what uh, i am looking out as a time frame swetha so i see that in the previous session sometimes i go to in half months but i think uh, i would be pretty much aggressive in finishing up the course uh by taking up a little bit longer hours of classes okay so let's see how it goes uh a uh, two months i cannot uh, guarantee maybe a little bit more than that uh because if i be more aggressive you guys would be everything would be running out of your mind so i don't want to have that in in the very first place uh so are we going to learn dotnet in the process uh, pretty much no or uh, we are not going to learn dotnet in this process okay so uh the slides which i had is only to show that uh, so i'm talking about the very initial slide wherein uh, i have this dotnet in place but no so will not have dotnet I'm a manual QA tester, but how my, but now my goal is to learn Java plus Selenium for QA. Okay, nice, Drew. Hopefully that this is going to help you out uh, to learn Java. Uh, okay, uh, are we still on? We're going to learn everything in this picture. Yes, Swetha, we are going to learn everything, but not .NET. Or probably uh, I'll have a basic uh, understanding about Docker if possible. I mean, this is the very end. Um, if time permits i'll talk about docker but i am not promising on this docker actually okay so is this session for java for qa so for qa also uh, pretty because if you want to learn selenium you have to understand core java concepts how much is the class uh, mission uh, about the class and the course fee structure i would uh, defer you to the admin folks they would have a better explanation on the course uh, fees and what not okay um so there are the questions which is coming up is this part of the q class a separate topic okay so how many weeks uh, so mission as i said it will be almost around 50 sessions or maybe 40 web sessions um is this only one demo class for java yeah this is the demo class for java tolika 
do we go through angular as well in this course uh no binayak i used to teach angular but um, i see that many of the people are interested in react so i have started uh, teaching react in this session okay so i'll show you the session uh, right now are you in class so yes my classes would typically start by 30 pm okay now before even i get into the website and show you the course uh, structure and whatnot so even uh, i would be helping in uh, interview tips and, and suggestions in the class uh, be giving some mock up interview questions and sometimes personalized suggestions on interviews also and uh, one good thing is that you can pay the fee one time and you can uh, join my sessions multiple times as well maybe you might have missed some sessions you want to join the next batch you can still do that and there would be daily weekly assignments uh, and pretty much more things which I cannot write in the same slide. And for the enrollment process, um, well, you might be having the emails, no doubt, uh, but again, uh, you can send out an email to training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys.com or gmail.com. Or if you have any questions, concerns, please take a screenshot of this. Uh, you can email me at jram.h2kinfosys at gmail.com. And one other thing to, uh, I, forgot to mention that we got a slack channel guys okay so uh, everyone would be in the slack uh, you guys can start asking questions to each other to me uh, for any questions concerns so it's going to be a pure communicative uh, session and uh, uh, if, as i said if you have any questions put that in the slack channel and i would be sending an invite uh, for this batch and then uh, you guys can start communicating with each other okay so we'll only discuss about Java and nothing else, by the way, right? So here I'm just stopping it, and for I would be just showing you the uh, course course structure out here. So just give me a moment. Uh, here we go, and just say h2kinfosys.com. Just go to this website, and just go to the course and go to the Java training out here. And uh, here you would find the complete syllabus, by the way. I'm going to copy this and ping it in the common chat. And here we go, send to all, right? So this is the complete uh, course structure. Um, so Sesha, you said I paid for Selenium, can attend for core Java part. Uh, just talk to the admin folks, uh, Shesha. Uh, they would give you a better understanding about this, right? So you can uh, check on this almost. Uh, you can check on the reviews, go through it, um, and then what? likewise. So I've given you the link. Please go through that. And as I said, if you have any questions, concerns, please do not hesitate to send an email to me or to the admin folks for getting you any answers, right? So uh, I hope I've done my part, folks. I promised you to have half an hour, but I think that was not sufficient for me this time because I see a lot of questions, a lot of interest on the people. So well, answering is all my privilege. And this is what I love doing it. I love teaching. And uh, moreover, I mean, if you guys can extract more out of me, I would be more happier because uh, the more you extract, the more I learn from my side, right? So thank you very much. Uh, your feedbacks are highly important to improve our course material and teaching methodologies. Please uh, email your suggestions to trainingh2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com. And thank you very much, guys. Uh, and thank you for your patience. Bye for now.